live recordings are trusted only to solid state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5 TV streams live with Telestream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in every week on Roku, Kodi, and other HLS video players. For local showtimes, visit Category5.tv. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's so great to have you here. Here at our studio in Barrie, we've gone through all kinds of technical difficulties. Oh my goodness, yes. So far this week. And so that sh sort of shapes the way that our show is going to be today. But uh, hey, I, I'm glad to have you here. And uh, glad to see you as well, Jeff. I'm glad to be here. Have you been well? I, I've, been, I've been good. You know, yeah. Surviving the whole COVID thing. Yeah. You know? I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> have not had it, to, to clarify, I have not had Whoa, it. Whoa, if you suddenly were like, I have COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> where's my mask? <laughs> no, but, no, but I mean, like all of the the, the restrictions and social distancing yeah. that it's played. I mean, it's it's a very different life. And this week with school starting, mm -hmm. um, depending on where you are, I know that in the States, some kids have already been to school for a couple of weeks. But for us here, school started up yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, so I sent my my oldest off to high school. I do not feel wow. like I should be old enough to have a high school kid. Yeah. I feel like I just left high school. That's enlightening, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think the first time I was on Cat 5, I was only a couple of years outside of high school. And You've now I've got a kidding. kid in high school. Wow. By the way, Robbie, you're super old. <laughs> You've been doing this TV show for so long. <laughs> it's nuts. But yeah, so I mean, we had we sent them off to high school, and that was very weird. Like, just the the restrictions. It's a whole different type of semester for them. Like, you know, the high school that I had, you have four classes mm -hmm. uh, for half the year, and then you switch to another four classes because of cohorts and and trying to group kids as much as possible. He goes under this system, uh, it's called a quadmester, which is four semesters of only two classes each, and he only has one class per week. Hmm. So he has the same class all day, every day this week. And then next week, he's got a different class all day, every day, and then he switches back and forth. Wow. So it's, it's, it's different. Yeah. But he's excited, so, you know what, whatever. And how do you <laughs> feel about sending your kids to school through, like, because right now... You know, I'm not, we're not really sure where we're at. Right. Like, are we in the midst of a pandemic? I think so. Like, we're, you know, we, we seem to think that we're on the way to things getting a little better and then things go back up again. Yeah. It's so, tough. I mean, we've heard all along, or at least I have heard all along, that there's always a second wave. And, I mean, you look at the states and yeah. they've gone into a second wave. You look at some places in Europe, there's a bit of a second wave. I know that a, a couple of weeks ago, I started hearing about a second wave in BC. It looks like the numbers are starting to go back up again in Ontario. Mm. So, you know, maybe we're on the, you know, the downward side of the first wave and going into second. Maybe it's just a blip in the map. Who knows? Every day is a, is a changing target. But as far as sending the kids to school, um, in our area, you have the option of your kids doing online learning or being in school. Mm -hmm. uh, and about 45% of the parents have chosen to keep their kids home and do online. Yeah, that's us. Yeah. And so you guys have made that decision. And we debated back and forth. But because our son was going into high school for the first time, I'm like, I don't want to rob him of the high school experience. Yeah. And he was really excited to go. So we're like, okay, you can go to high school. If it's a problem, we're pulling you out. Our daughter is in French immersion. And I, about oh. the only French word I know is toilet, uh, <laughs> which, you know, works with my humor style. So wait, uh, <laughs> that's an English word, Jeff. <laughs> There's like an ex goo or something I know in there. toilet and the resume. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, and poutine. There we go. Three yes. words. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm useless to her at home for, for schooling. So it's like, sure, okay, yeah, we're, that we're, makes it tough. We're going to send her. And then with our third, we're like, well, if two are going, you're going as well. So <laughs> that's really kind of how it played out. And we're completely on the other side of the spectrum in that we've decided to keep the kids home yep. because that's an option. Yes. Just because we just don't know like what, what's tomorrow going to bring right now. So, you know, let, let's play it safe. I don't yeah. have kids in French immersion or anything like that. So, yeah. you know, maybe we're fortunate in that way. But all that to say, like, 
Here we are up in Ontario, Canada, and we know that you are going through this as well. If you're a parent, then you're probably going through the same kinds of things that we're going through. Like, do we send our kids to school? Do we keep them home? Do you know what happens if we have to pull them out? And you know, it's a really tough time for all of us. So you know, it's just just know that we're all in this together. We're we're thinking of you and and uh, and really hope that uh, that everything you know we're hoping for the best. Yeah, and I mean, and then on top of global pandemic uh it's it's uh you know you look at some of the areas in the states i mean mm-hmm. last week was a hurricane and this week california with the wildfires yeah. it's like how much more can 2020 hand out yeah this is ridiculous and it, it just seems to be non-stop for a lot of folks like i've got friends in california who work in uh, tv production yes. as you know and, that's right and with with their studios having to have shut down in march and then they're coming up, you know, August time, and and it's looking like maybe we can reopen and start doing some filming with social distancing in place, and uh, and then the fires start, and so yeah. we've got to shut down because of the fires, and it's it's unbelievable. So, you know, I just you know we're thinking of yous. Uh, we have it so very good up here in Canada, in, in that, you know, I don't want to ever be complacent, and I don't want to ever um, take for granted the fact that I don't. I've never had to live through a, a big fire like that, right? Like a wildfire. We we just don't get that kind of thing here in Ontario where we are. Right. I know, like we've heard of some out, out west and things, but um, certainly not here. And uh, you know, it's it's hard for us to watch the news and think we have viewers in all these places that are you know being ravaged by a hurricane or going through these wildfires and thinking, you know, we, we really care about you and, and really want the best for you. And, right. and so just know that, you know, even though we are up here in Canada, uh, we are thinking of you and, and we wish you all the best and every bit of safety um, to you and your loved ones. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to look at this week is the Pine Book Pro. And I know like we've got some buzz going on Twitter and, you know, folks are really excited about what we're about to do because we're going to be showing you how we can hack up our own distribution, our own installation of Debian Linux on our Pinebook Pro. However, unfortunately, the tech now our scenario up here, our, <laughs> the impact of COVID-19 is completely <laughs> different for us right. because it's really impacted our studio in that like the technology does, you know, it's it, we're doing our best uh, amidst um, staff shortages and, and all those kinds of things and not being able to be here with staff um, for the amount of hours that we should be yeah. uh, in order to prepare for a show. So unfortunately, the technology is not there for us this week, but we will be looking at that next week. So the Pinebook Pro is a sleek, slimline, beautiful Linux laptop. I'm so jealous. Every time you pull that out. Oh yeah, look at yeah. that, Jeff. Do you want to feel that? How I, how heavy is that? Like uh, that is, you know what? He's th- just like I'm just gonna just slide feather. that in my pocket. Yeah, and I'll let much, you know eh? how heavy that is when I get home. It's got like a 1080p full HD screen. Like I'm looking at Debian right there, and it's like it just feels like this like lightweight toy in it, a it way. It really is, and, and yet metal solid. chassis. Yeah, as well, like, and yet solid. And so you think about like the the Apple Air or whatever they call it. What is it? The is that what they call it? MacBook Air? Yeah, MacBook I don't know. Air. I can't afford that. Which stuff. which has a you know as far as I can tell is is you know it's a slim notebook computer as well. But you know it costs what ten thousand dollars. Yeah, this is two hundred bucks. Right. See, that's a beautiful price right there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I can buy six of these and be happy. Um, but we're going to talk about next week why this may not be for everybody even though it's a great price a great product uh we're gonna we're gonna get into all of that uh, i really wanted to get into it this week jeff i know but unfortunately we'll shut it here unfortunately we're unable to but becca is here with the news yes and uh we've got robert koenig here with the crypto corner as well so they're going to share with us um so can we just we'll just throw it right over to becca yeah here, we, here she is Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. A frightening takeover vulnerability in the popular file manager plugin for WordPress is being exploited in the wild, giving attackers the ability to drop and execute code on around 700,000 WordPress sites. A U.S. startup unveils a battery made from nuclear waste that could last up to 28,000 years. 
On Thursday, 60 more SpaceX satellites were launched to join the rest of the Starlink fleet. The latest Windows 10 cumulative update breaks sleep mode, we'll share the fix, and Minecraft is making the jump to PlayStation VR. Stick around, the full details and this week's Crypto Corner are coming up. This is the Category5.tv Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. From the newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Attackers are exploiting a critical vulnerability in a popular WordPress plugin that enables an adversary to run arbitrary commands and upload files to a target WordPress site. The flaw is in the File Manager plugin, which has more than 700,000 active users and is designed to help administrators manage files on their WordPress sites. The plugin includes a third-party library called LFinder, and the vulnerability results from the way that File Manager renamed an extension in LFinder. The vulnerability was introduced in version 6.4 of File Manager, which was released in May. But it wasn't until late August that researchers first saw exploit attempts against the bug. An exploit for the vulnerability was posted on GitHub in the, in the last week of August, and on September 1st, the maintainers of the file manager released an updated version that fixed the bug. Although the fixed version has been available for nearly two weeks, researchers say not many of the WordPress sites running the plugin have updated, which means they are still vulnerable. Ramgal of WordFence said on Friday, Sites not using this plugin are still being probed by bots looking to identify and exploit vulnerable versions of the File Manager plugin, and we have recorded attacks against 1.7 million sites since the vulnerability was first exploited. Although WordFence protects well over 3 million WordPress sites, this is still only a portion of the WordPress ecosystem. As such, the true scale of these attacks is larger than what we were able to record. The severity of the vulnerability makes it urgent to update, especially when automated scans for the bug ongoing, especially with automated scans for the bug ongoing. Identifying vulnerable sites is a trivial task, and with an exploit publicly available, time is of the essence, particularly given the fact that an attacker would be able to upload arbitrary files to the site after a successful exploit. Sick of your smartphone dying at 3 p.m.? A U.S. startup may have the answer as they've unveiled a battery made from nuclear waste that could last up to 28,000 years. The power for the nano diamond battery comes from radioactive isotopes used in nuclear reactors. Its radioactive core is protected by multiple layers of synthetic diamonds, one of the hardest materials to damage or break. The energy is absorbed in the diamond and used to generate electricity. The battery can be used to power devices and machines of any size, from aircraft and rockets to electric vehicles and smartphones. Nima Golsharifi, CEO and co-founder of NDB, said, As members of society, we are extremely concerned about the welfare of the planet and are focused on lowering climate change to protect our planet for future generations. He goes on to say, with the NDB battery, we have achieved a massive, groundbreaking, proprietary technological breakthrough of a battery that is emission-free, lasts thousands of years, and only requires access to natural air in order to power devices. The company says the development of the first commercial prototype battery is currently underway and will be available later this year. On Thursday, another 60 SpaceX satellites were launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida to join the rest of the Starlink fleet. In just the last month, there have been three successful launches and deployments, making SpaceX the largest fleet of satellites in the world, with more than 700 currently in orbit. SpaceX founder and CEO Elon Musk wants to create a constellation made up of thousands of Starlink satellites that can offer high-speed internet anywhere on the planet. In March, Musk said that at the, he said at the Satellite 2020 conference, the world seems to have an insatiable appetite for bandwidth. We're certainly happy to launch other satellites. If our appetite for bandwidth was insatiable before a global pandemic, we're even hungrier now. The plan is to ultimately create an interconnected network of about 12,000 small satellites in low orbit around Earth. 
Using a small dish, customers will be able to connect and get fast internet speeds, with rural and tough-to-reach areas being the primary market. SpaceX recently said it's building about 120 satellites a month. Astronomers are concerned the extra points of light will make it harder to observe the night sky. Analyst Carmi Levy says, They're trying to look at things far away in the cosmos, and you have all these pesky little satellites orbiting in front of them, causing streaks across their imaging. SpaceX has responded to the concerns by modifying its satellites to make them less reflective. The company hopes to use Starlink Internet as a way to fund the company's version of or vision of going to the moon and to Mars. SpaceX says the service will first be available in the U.S. and parts of Canada. Public trials are expected to take place later this year. They said Friday that Starlink has already seen extraordinary demand from potential customers, with nearly 700,000 individuals across the United States alone indicating they are interested in the coming service. The latest Windows 10 cumulative update has broken sleep mode, and we'll share with you the fix. Also, Minecraft is making the jump to PlayStation VR. Becca has these stories coming up, plus Robert's here with the Crypto Corner, so don't go anywhere. World of Cryptos and welcome back to the Crypto Corner. I hope you're well and I hope you survived the recent correction in the market without any harm. This week I'd like to focus on something that I touched on before which is DeFi, Decentralized Finance. And the reason is that some of our viewers started asking questions, hey isn't DeFi a scam? Why should I be part of this year? So let me answer you those questions. First, no it's not a scam. It's on the contrary, it's going to be the future of our financial system as we know it. And yes, you should definitely be part of this year. Now, um, where is this coming from? And if we look at this website here, you can see that if you would provide ample ETH as liquidity, you would get over 1000% APR. And that sounds like magic, right? It doesn't sound very real, especially if you would put money in your uh, normal account in uh, your traditional bank, you would probably get 0.5% APR. So why is this number so big? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the detail of where this number is coming from. And uh, I'm not going to be uh, going too much into too much detail. Uh, so I'm simplifying a lot, um, but you will get the idea. The first part is if we look at the rates uh, of where the market is in, the, in the, the crypto market, it's not that much different from the traditional bank. Yeah? So USDC, if I would provide USDCs to, to uh, for example, Aave, I would get 2.1% uh, interest. If I would borrow at Aave um, uh, USDC, then I would go 4.4%. So far, so good, right? So that's not different. So that's part one. Part two is if I would provide liquidity. And for that, we go to something called Uniswap. And Uniswap is where you can exchange uh, tokens. So if you've got ETH and you want to buy, uh, let's say, BAND, then as you can see down here, you would have to provide a liquidity provider. You would, receive, you would have to pay a liquidity provider fee. And this this year, and if you would provide money into this pool, so if you, in other words, you provide ETH and BAND, so that other people can uh, participate in this year, then you would get part of this uh, fee, most part even. Yeah, so it's very simple. You click on pool, you click on add liquidity, you say what is it going to be, and then you approve this year, and that's it. And that's all you have to do. Uh, so that's how you provide liquidity. That's something that is unknown in the current market. Yeah, that, that's reserved to banks, market makers, Federal Reserve. You're not allowed to provide, you're not allowed to be a market maker in the traditional market. Crypto market's different. You can be uh, uh, participating in that. The fourth one is something that we know also in the traditional market. And there are high incentives. And let me show you some examples. First one is um, here with credit cards. If I sign up with this blue cash preferred card, they would give me $250 straight away. Or if I would go with Chase Sapphire, there's a bonus value of 1,200 attached to this card. So as you can see, there's also marketing costs that they are investing in. 
that you will participate of. So that's, that's one way of um, how the so-called traditional market is incentivizing you to be part of their network. Other example is flights. Yeah, I can book a flight now at the moment from Dallas to Las Vegas for only $36 return. No airline will survive on those rates, but they do that to attract people to fly uh, on this uh, day with that uh, airline on that, on that journey. Um, if you book that a day before, that will be probably $300, $400. Uh, same with air miles. <clears throat> why, don't, why do they give you air miles? So that you can book then after a few uh, flights, uh, a free flight. Same thing. It's just they want to attract you to be part of their network. And the third one that I forgot to mention before is staking rewards. So if I, I would take, for example, Tezos to secure the network, um, the, by proof of stake, then Tezos would give me, in this case, through Coinbase, 5% staking fee. Yeah, that's just by providing, by keeping my money, my Tezos in a wallet and not using it. I would receive 5%. So there are a few incentives that are compared to the traditional market equivalent and not that much different to uh, the DeFi market. Now, the beauty of the DeFi market is its software. It's not just some people sitting there and deciding what the interest rate is or what the incentives are going to be. It's a software uh, platform that you just participate in and it's neutral. You can, nobody will ask you for some uh, weird uh, passport pictures or so, you just be part of that. And that's the strength of this year. So these software packages uh, or software platforms don't have high costs in building people and so on. They're just a bunch of people that coded something, uh, they put it online, and that's why they can, can offer you so high uh, interest rates. Now, before you really dive into this year, I would like to show you two websites that are important. The first one is here, uh, defisafety.com, because here you can see which platform is really safe and which one isn't safe. So if I take Aave, for example, uh, which is one of the big ones, then they have got a score of 84%. And why? It's because uh, execute code validation, 96% documentation, because it's all public available. They documented everything, 90% testing, almost done. Audit, like in a traditional market with finance, where you've got an auditor to uh, review your books. So they do that here with the code. So it's a third party that reviews your code, how good it is. Uh, so this is pretty good. But on the other hand, you've got something like based, that in principle did not do anything really. I mean, they just put the code online and didn't even test it uh, beforehand. There's nothing is documented and an audit was done only to 20%. So this is something that I would really be careful of. Yeah, unless you, you, are, you know what you're doing. I would not be part of those that are in here in red because it's uh, it is a little bit dangerous. Well, that's the first website. The second website is one where you can learn a lot. Uh, it's defirate.com. Uh, this includes everything in relation to the decentralized finance market. Yeah, so if you want to learn what, uh, how insurance can be done uh, and, and what the lingo is, everything in relation to DeFi, yield farming and so on, you'll find on this website. It's very well explained and I can only highly recommend you to be uh, part of that. Anyway, I hope I was able to explain to you why it is important that you participate in this year. Uh, just play around a little bit. Um, don't plan to make 1,200%, just make 100%. Um, but at least be part of this year and learn more about uh, DeFi because, as you saw, it is going to be the future. Um, anyway, that's it from me uh, today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you next week again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks so much, Robert. Now, if you're watching, we are not giving financial advice. This is uh, educational purposes on how the cryptocurrency market works and things that uh, you need to know and different uh, tips and tricks. Uh, you know, as we've always said in the past, you know, and, and as Robert has said, you know, only invest what you're willing to lose because the market is very volatile. It's always on and things can change in a heartbeat. So again, we're not giving financial advice. It's just uh, more so education for you. All right, we're gonna throw back to Becca. Here she is. Thank you, Ravi. Having trouble sleeping? 
The latest Windows 10 cumulative update breaks sleep mode, causing laptops around the world to become insomniacs. We have the fix to yet another Microsoft update blunder. Microsoft's September 2020 optional update seems to be causing some trouble for those who are running Windows 10 version 2004. While the update comes with fixes for critical issues and improvements, like many of Microsoft's previous cumulative updates, this one is far from perfect. Some users are reporting that the optional update broke Windows 10 sleep mode. With the update installed, some users are reportedly facing an issue where their PC keeps waking up from sleep mode. One user states on Feedback Hub, When I close the lid, press the power button or select sleep in the power menu or the WinX menu. Instead of sleeping, the screen simply turns off and my laptop does not go to sleep even after leaving it alone all night. Similar complaints can also be found on Microsoft's forum website. What's worse is that at the time of broadcast, there isn't a fix available for Microsoft. There's a temporary solution available if you're affected, though it's a bit hacky and reminiscent of the old up, up, down, down, left, right game hacks of the 90s. First, you need to stop the Windows Update service, then start it again, then restart it, then do a check for updates and install the pending updates. Once they're in, reboot your computer and you should be good to go with a working sleep mode. Minecraft is making the jump to PlayStation VR. Minecraft is already available in VR form for Windows 10 with the Oculus Rift and Windows Mixed Reality, plus there's a Samsung Gear VR version. Minecraft PlayStation VR is based on Minecraft VR tech from these other VR platforms. Mojang Studios executive producer Roger Carpenter said, Everyone who has Minecraft on PlayStation 4 will get that patch automatically. Download that patch and you'll get access to the new Microsoft VR functionality. Of course, you'll need a PSVR setup in order to use it. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic forced them to adjust how they develop Minecraft, Carpenter added, but the process was relatively drama-free. Skybox Labs, also working on Halo Infinite, helped Mojang work on this release. The Minecraft PlayStation VR experience will retain everything from the base PS4 version and will add a bunch of new settings. This includes two ways to play the game, immersive and living room. Mojang didn't expand on what that means, but if we were to guess, the latter, the latter may feel like sitting in a virtual room and playing on a giant screen. Mojang didn't reveal whether Minecraft PlayStation VR will work with the upcoming PS5. Sony has said their PlayStation Move Motion controllers, PlayStation VR Aim controller, and PlayStation Camera will all work with supported PS VR games on the PS5, but it's not yet entirely clear what that means. Get your PlayStation VR ready. The free update drops later this month. Thanks for watching the Category 5.tv newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And if you appreciate what we do, become a patron at patreon.com slash category5. From the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Well, thank you so much for being here with us again this week. We are endeavoring to do our best through this time because, you know, our studio is not quite up to the shape that it needs to be in to be able to broadcast a full uh, broadcast for you, but we are doing our best. So I appreciate that you're here and uh, thank you for, for joining us this week. Jeff, what are we doing next week? Well, next week we're going <laughs> to be uh, looking at your Pine Book. Doing yeah, the Debian Pine install. Pinebook Pro, granted. Pinebook Pro. Yes. Uh, so that's exciting. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we'll probably have some witty banter. A lot of that. Two really good looking guys. Um, <laughs> and just some all around good fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hope you'll be here. So join us at category5.tv. And of course, follow us on Twitter. We are at Category 5 TV. I'm personally on Twitter at Robbie Ferguson. You'll also find us on, on uh, Facebook and everywhere else. I mean, YouTube, obviously. Um, yeah. Get us on your Roku devices. Uh, you'll find us all over the place. Just do a search for Category 5 Technology TV and you'll find us and we'll see you there. Okay. And also get into the community. 
We've got a very robust live active community on Discord, so you can find that link right on our website. And uh, all throughout the week, you know, just because we're not broadcasting doesn't mean Cat5 isn't live and well uh, through our viewer community. And you can pop into Discord, get help with all your tech issues, and talk about recipes as well. It's a phenomenal yeah, group. We have a weight loss room as well because I've been losing weight. It, getting, clearly, getting I'm fit. not in that room. I'm I'm in there and I'm I'm doing my best. I'm learning. <laughs> How many steps you at? I feel like we haven't talked. About I don't know. I'm not wearing my step counter today, Jeff. <laughs> uh, mine. Oh, look at that! I switched to face that doesn't have my step counter on it. Oh, oh, that's yeah. a good strategy. Yep. But anyway, it's it's depressing <laughs> to see how few steps I actually take. It's true. Uh, I'm a geek. <laughs> anyway. So you take care. We'll see you again next week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.